Ready. Set. Gamecast. Welcome to Ready Set Gamecast, a bi weekly podcast about video games and PAX Plague. I'm Bryce, and I'm joined by Patient Zero Darian. What the fuck? <laughs> you, ca- you, came, you came to PAX sick, so that makes you Patient oh, Zero. Oh, did you actually? Yes. Oh. oh. You spread it. <laughs> it- no. <laughs> That's not how calls work. <laughs> you would have gotten sick before you left. Oh, I. It, it was spread to me by someone who was sick, who got sick yeah. as as they. He's saying you brought it and yeah. he got sick from you, and then it spread. It was passed the around. Uh, uh, and the man with the unstoppable immune system, Teddy Chinaris. Honestly, I don't want to jinx myself, but like you're not wrong. <laughs> Like, I kind of haven't gotten really sick in, like, years. And now I'm going to wake up tomorrow and be dead. Yeah. Um, Not wake up. But, like, no, I, I <laughs> legitimately... <Christ. laughs> but I legitimately haven't been seriously sick in, like, three years. <laughs> and it's pretty great. But it's my time is coming for me. And last but not least, the scientist studying this all from her Pax Plague Proof Bunker... Miranda. <laughs> I'm super glad I'm not sick, but my roommate has had like a coughing problem for like five weeks now, and I keep waiting mm. until it affects me. Mm. That Hopefully it doesn't. That sounds bad. It never does. Miranda, as a scientist, why am I dying? Um, it's penance. I don't know what you did wrong, oh, but oh. uh, this is what you get. So, so... <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get. So what's what's the like cure? Do I have to like go uh go sacrifice a goat or two and you'll be fine. Okay. That's Wait, wow. no, don't hold on. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we sacrificing? But it has to, to be like really no shitty question. goats to ba- balance it out. <laughs> Who's like the Greek god of like sickness? I'm sure that's a thing. They're, they got they got gods oh, for Apollo. Everything. Wait, so huh. is he... Is oh, he... yeah, he's the god of medicine as well. I forgot about mm. that. I was yeah. wondering, though, like, is he the, someone who you pray to if you're sick or do you, like... Or if you want somebody to get sick. Yeah, if you're like, <laughs> uh, I love sickness. I'm all about it. Ah, yes, the plague. I'm in through this. Yes. <laughs> well, if you're, like, if you're a plague doctor, it's, it's good business. <laughs> um, before we get into the show proper, I want to give a shout out to Bunny and Matt for taking over yeah. Race That Gamecast while we're gone. I listened to their episode on the drive home and they nailed it. They, they haven't yet, but I heard that they killed us. Yeah, they, they talked about they talked about me being dead a lot. And just all of they we are all dead and they replaced us apparently. Except uh, for me. Uh, no, I think I think M- Matt was supposed to be you. Yeah, yeah. But I think they he didn't took your kill place. me to replace me. He just said he is me. Ah. Mm. Um, At the beginning, Bunny said I am Bryce, and Matt yeah. said I am Darian. And I'm then, the only dead one. Yeah, oh, yeah. Teddy's the dead they one. They killed me. You, you were the weak link. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's what I hear. They killed oh. me, <laughs> and then you guys lived on with them. But the uh, now that we have the old, the best Darian back, uh, she can tell us what she's been playing. I can do that. Yay. The, the real Darian. <laughs> the real one. Hi, it's me. Not one of these uh, fake chumps. I, in the beginning, it says favorite game from PAX. Yeah. So there's there. Uh, each day we did little recaps of uh, what we played at PAX. But I figured, hey, the audio for those kind of sucks. So I figured uh, we'd give a little shout out to our favorite games that yeah, we played. That at sounded PAX. pretty good. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't bad at all. It could have been better. Uh, next, sure. ne- next time we'll like talk into actual mics instead of. It was a um, it was a good. The videos turned out pretty good though. Oh yeah, yeah. The the In general fr- the, like first, the last one was really good. The first and last day were very good. Uh, the editor put in some sweet B roll and made it look a little bit nicer. But I uh, figured we could do a quick shout out to some of the our favorite games from PAX um, before we get into the non-PAX games we've been playing. 
But uh, all right, well, I ended up playing like twenty different games at PAX, um, and picking just one would be ridiculous. Uh, my hypest game that I'm excited for is Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, the gameplay is gorgeous. The voice acting is perfect. I'm stunned with how well they've done with it, and I can't wait to see the full product. I'm so hype. Uh, it is very, they, very fun. It's really good. They they just fucking nailed it. They did everything they were supposed to. I'm so excited. Um, I'm not excited for whether or not they're going to do multiple endings because that was a rumor that they had at the beginning where you could possibly have different endings. And the Final Fan one of the key points in Final Fantasy VII is one of the major characters dying, and it's been a meme in video games forever, but I'm still not going to spoil it. Uh, but- I mean, uh, that kind of spoils it, though, because now when people play, they're going to go, well, one of these characters is going to die. Okay, let for the record, <laughs> they don't know Final who, Fantasy VII though. came out 22 years ago, yeah, so you know what? Yeah, Actually, no. I don't feel bad. People were talking no. about the rumor about the possibility of changing the fact that Ah, uh, neither of you have played it, have you? No, I know. God damn it! I know who dies. It's okay. But I know it's who like, dies because I've been on the internet. Cool. I, 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 I've been waiting for the remake because it's like the graphics. I don't know. I, are I, bad. I knew at some point the they would are remake from it. Twenty-two years ago, exactly. and it actually still stands up. If you care about the game, if you actually played through the game, it's not that bad. I'm literally going to replay Final Fantasy VII for like the fourth time. Hmm. Yeah. It actually, honestly, it doesn't look that bad. Like the here's a screenshot of the. Um, I think this is a screenshot of the boss battle that we played in the remake, but of the original version. That's really cool. It's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the boss. That's that we, the boss you fight in the yeah. in the demo. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. And I it like his looks little claws. Fucking great. <laughs> yeah. It looks like from 22 years ago. But it was a game that was ahead of its time when it came out. Yeah, I've seen games that hold up a lot. I worse. think when they're pull when it's pulled out, uh, in in proper battle stuff, it looks fine. But I'm also seeing like the super like polygonal, uh, cloud, and I'm like, mm, I'll wait for the mm-hmm. remake. Nah, it's still great. Polygonal. You're not a real fan. It's fine. Uh, I'm not a real I'm really fan. Excited. I haven't played it. No, he's not. He hasn't played it. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> I'm really excited. I'm nervous for how, if like this rumor is going to be true about if they're going to make it so that you can play it in such a way that Aerith doesn't die. Because, uh, I mean, that's been a big deal in gaming history. Like, it's one of those things that, like, heartbreaking. Like, you can't change it. It's going to happen. But, like, oh, maybe in the remake it's going to happen. Like, I. I don't see them changing the the ending just because, like, I mean, we also need to have no idea how the future chapters are gonna work. We they're just like we're making this game. Just let us make this game. Don't worry about anything past this game. We need to make this. Well, because well, back, they, about they it. were like, oh, we don't actually know when these chapters are gonna end. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were they were like, yeah, we're doing like multiple parts. Like it's going to be episodic, but like um somebody asked when it ended or like what the second part was, mm-hmm. and they're just like, I mean, we'll figure it out. <laughs> there was literally a quote along those lines. So yeah. I, I'm kind of I'm more worried about the like releases. I the game itself, the quality of it seems really cool, really good, and it seems really promising, but like I'm more worried about the next one. Yeah, I don't really. I'm not super worried about this one. It looks re- it looks really good and it plays really great. I got to play it as well. It's beautiful and I love it. I'm really excited and nervous as a longtime fan. Yeah. Uh, I also played the demo Boyfriend Dungeon and I'm crying because there wasn't enough of it to ease my hunger, <laughs> craving hunger for, for this game for smooching swords. I'm wearing that shirt again today. No big deal. <laughs> uh, uh, no, it's really good. Uh, the graphics are beautiful. The gameplay is really fun. It's got a nice mix up of dating sim and like dungeon crawler esque stuff, and it's just fun and cheesy and amazing, and I love it. Um, and I'm also excited for telling lies, but uh, I played her story, which is uh, directed by the same guy, Sam Barlow. 
Um, and it follows the same premise. You're like digging through like files of videos and stuff to try to put together the story. But I've seen a lot of people hating on this one because in her story, you pick out keywords and you find videos and they start at the beginning of the videos and then you have to like piece together, like, you know, find where her story, her husband has disappeared and she's, there's like four or five different interviews of her and, you know, where she was when it happened and you have to basically like try to figure out what the real story is. Um, but in Telling Lies, there's not a lot to go off of. And it starts like at the keyword that you searched. So like, for example, if you search love um, and and it's like secret recorded footage, like most of it's like FaceTime or like Skype conversations. So if like you end a conversation with, OK, bye, love you. And it's the end of a five minute video. You have to swipe all the way back to the beginning of the video to watch all of it, which is really annoying. There's no way to just click to the beginning. Mm. Um, and I've seen a lot of people just like talking about how it's kind of a lackluster story. So I'm ex- I'm mm. excited, but not excited to figure out if I'm going to like it as much as her story. Yeah, yeah. That, that game is out now. So yep. I'm I I'm interested. I might try to check that out. It's on Steam and mobile devices. I think iOS. I'm not sure if it's on Android. I'd have to look. I'm not sure. I just know that uh, the iOS store has a lot of negative reviews because it's really hard to scrub through on a touch screen, I guess. Mm. It's not quite as user friendly. Um, and a lot of people have complained about it like not working at all. So that's great. <laughs> uh but post packs, I've and, and before packs, I played I finished Mario Odyssey. Nice. Which I didn't put in this, but I did. I remembered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I played some Stardew Valley, which is awesome. I'm trying really Always hard awesome. to not date Sebastian again, but I just have that tendency to just gravitate toward him because he's my bae. But I was like, oh, I need mm. to date Abigail this time. <laughs> Let's date Abigail. <laughs> That's everybody's favorite. Abigail is wonderful. She's really cool. Like I could be her best friend probably, but I don't know. I I'm having trouble getting my character to like getting myself to be interested because like sebastian's sexy emo boy who likes to play video <laughs> games like i mean that's basically abigail boy. abigail's sexy yeah, she yeah. talks about she's not as emo. rocks she's weird <laughs> I love it. every time i give her a court she's like thanks how'd you know i was hungry like what <laughs> it's because it was a bug originally and the Don't community really that. liked it so he left it in he was like oh, all right if you guys like it <laughs> it's just weird. Also, like the fan theories about her being like the wizard's daughter or whatever. Oh, is, yeah. It's yeah. Pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure if you like g- become friends with the wizard, he'll kind of talk about that. Uh, or at oh. least, uh, like, not directly, but like, kind of Allude insinuates to it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm trying to like just be friends with everybody. Like, I've spent like three of the 20 days that I've had, like starting off doing my farming and then just running around and giving gifts to people because I just want to be friends with everybody. I'm a good person. Uh (laughs) I like that I found out that you can get a divorce in Stardew Valley and your your, like partner will hate you, but you can you can like pay a witch to make your uh, partner forget so they won't like or hate you anymore. Don't your kids disappear if you do that too though? That's so creepy. I, I, I'm pretty sure if you get a divorce, your kids just fucking vanish and no one talks about it. They're, oh they're, with, they're with the mom now. Except the mom doesn't remember you, so why would the kids be around? <laughs> they just, the mom would just be like, who are you? What are you doing here? The witch, the witch takes the kids as payment. It costs $50,000 to do it, which is a lot, first of all. Or 50000 gold, I guess. Uh... A divorce costs 50,000 gold. After filing for divorce, players have the option to cancel before the end of the day. If they don't cancel, their spouse, spouse's room, and unique outside area will be gone the next morning, and their friendship level will return to zero hearts. Under their name, it will state 
ex. <laughs> wow. Yikes. After the divorce, the player will or the spouse will move back to their old residence and will have negative interactions with the player, citing the failure of their marriage. They'll also <laughs> not accept gifts from the player. So, like, hey, we're not friends anymore. Fuck you. Wow. <laughs> the player can still enter the ex spouse's bedroom or home as if the player had a two friendship hearts. Oh, any children from the marriage will stay at the farmhouse. Oh. Okay. Um, so you get the kids. So yeah. don't get murdered. <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay. No. It, now the witch's hut. Okay. The you can find the shrine that'll erase all ex spouses' memories for an offering of thirty thousand gold. So also extremely expensive. Afterward, all ex spouses will have no uh, all ex ex spouses. Hello. <laughs> yeah. I guess you can just marry everyone and divorce <laughs> yeah, just everyone. Marry them all, divorce them all, and then go to the witch and start all over. Why not? Uh, allowing players to date and remarry them if they choose. Children from marriage can also be turned into doves at the witch's hut in exchange for a prismatic shard. Nice. This permanently what? removes children from the game. If the player is expecting a child and gets a divorce, the child will not be born slash delivered. <laughs> the child oh ceases to exist. That's so wow. dark. Yikes. Yep. I'm just so, gone forever. Don't get a divorce. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Stop why it. would you just Or yeah. or if you got a lot of money, you can just do whatever you want. You can just make kids stop happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, the ultimate birth um, control. Yeah. So Stardew Valley, I also finally That's played so through Emily is Away and Emily is Away 2 for the first time. I got bad endings both times. Congrats. Well, um, Emily Emily bad. is Away <laughs> 1 only has one ending. Oh really? The middles yeah. can be different. There's they'll they'll like like if you kiss her or not, she'll bring that up later, but no matter what, the ending is the same. Um okay. Well, there's many endings to Emily is away too, yeah. and I got a really bad one. I played it on stream and it was very sad. <laughs> yeah, I, I talked to him when he was getting ready to release Emily is away too and asked him kind of uh, if this is going to have different endings and stuff. And he said he had like a whole flow chart of, of the different like paths you can take and stuff. So it seems like there's a lot of choices with that one where you had like a few that kind of mattered in Emily's Away too, But at the end of the day, you're, you're stuck with the same situation, which that game's really cool. It's free and it's uh, a cool little story about talking to girls online. <laughs> Well, talking to yep. a, to a, Emily's way about talking to a girl online, and really your friends. I guess you only really talk to Emily, but you can see like your your like conversation or like things things that other people in your friends list have, like their away messages. Yeah, you and can stuff. view all of their uh, profiles and stuff, and they have links to different YouTube videos and stuff. Uh, and uh, when I first opened Emily as a way, it was really creepy and also really cool because it pulled from my Steam friends list. So they generated fake profiles for my real friends. It was kind of cool. I, I had that happen. Uh, and I was like, how did this person get in there? And then I was like, oh, it's probably a, a Steam thing. It's weird. I thought it was cool, but uh, I also played a, like two games of League of Legends, and I... Darren, do you want to know who, who, who was put into my game? Sure. Scribbly. Great. Oh, that's cool. Because I, was, I, I messaged Scribbly, and I was like, are you friends with the developer? What's, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then it was just like, I've never heard of Emily is Away, and I'm like, oh... It might it might be a Steam thing then. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, no, I I didn't have any question. I was like, oh, these are pulled from Steam because like it was Snow and David, and oh. then once David got into game, it disappeared. It was just people that were idly online for mine, and then Snow went offline, so I didn't have any more friends that were appearing after that. So oh. I was like, all right, thanks guys. This is fun, but I guess if you don't want to play with me, it's fine. <laughs> um. Yeah, League of Legends, and then I played some Dead by Daylight. I've been grinding to get a lot of blood points on Dead by Daylight because eventually they're going to release the Stranger Things DLC, and I'm going to get Na uh, Nancy, and I'm going to have her leveled up super high, and I've got a lot of blood points just waiting for that to happen. Teddy Chineris, nice. what what was your favorite game at PAX West 2019? I don't know if I had a favorite game i also it was didn't destiny even... 2 yeah yeah sure <laughs> just widow's court the destiny one map from <laughs> like from the booth um i 
I did Destiny 2 was the thing that I literally played the most while I was at PAX now that I think about it. Um I played I didn't really play a ton. Um play I, I played like the this little like dungeon crawler with which is like 2v2 um like couch co-op and it's really fun it's called ready set heroes you like have six minutes to go and collect loot and gear and whatnot and then at the end you fight and whoever wins wins and you fight in like a random little game mode and it's super cute and you play as like little animals um that one was really fun that's coming out literally like i think i think he said october 1st for like 20 bucks um and i played that uh, i played that predator game that was really cool uh, I feel like that has a lot of promise, but it's definitely not ready yet. But that's cool because it's not coming out yet. It's coming out like next year, so I, there's time for that. Um, but it was really cool. Um, what what else did I play? Other than that, honestly, I was gonna talk about some of the stuff that I didn't that I played not at PAX. Like I've been playing a lot of um, like in my off time, I've been playing a lot of Switch stuff. Still grinding Rogue Legacy because I always will be. Um, and Torchlight 2 came out on the Switch, which is an old PC Diablo 3 like action RPG, which is really fun. Um, I will say, Switch version, not amazing. <laughs> There's Aww. like some problems. Yeah, I know. I was really bummed. I was like, damn it. It runs really well, so that's fine. And the UI is good, like the the menus and whatnot look um look good and they run well, and that's fine. But like the combat doesn't so it's supposed to like auto target like whoever is like in front of you right but like it it's not it doesn't work super great like sometimes you'll be right in front and you'll swing and you'll miss and i'm like you're right there like so i don't know it's it takes a lot of finesse but they've they've definitely talked about how they're going to be patching and like bringing updates to it pretty regularly so hopefully it'll it'll uh get better um but yeah played a little bit of halo 5 when i got home um I don't know, if I think of more stuff that I played at PAX that was new, I'll let you know. I did play the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which was awesome. Um, and I did also play Borderlands 3, for sure. That was one of the things I made sure that I played, and I really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to it more now, I think. Um, I'm still apprehensive, but I'm, I'm excited. The final boss fight was really cool on that. There were a lot of neat mechanics. Um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. I would say my favorite game at PAX was the last one I played, and maybe that's just the one that sticks out the most, and it was Sayonara Wild Hearts, uh, which is a cool, like, music video rhythm, like, action game. It's it's hard to kind of put in words. It's kind of simple. Uh, you're just kind of moving around and sometimes tapping uh, based on, like, stuff happening in the game. Hmm. But just the... The style, the music, everything about it uh, was really, really dope. There's kind of a fun video of me reading a little card about uh, Sayonara Wild Hearts, and Teddy's just like face going like, mm-hmm, and then at the end you're just like, hell yeah, which, which uh, <laughs> sounds cool. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you saw that video, uh, and then uh, and the dev- the devs of Wild Hearts uh, retweeted that, so that was kind of cool. Really, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. There's, <laughs> I've been getting a shit ton of likes I didn't on even there. Know that. I, and I, was, I honestly wish you had tagged me. Oh well, see, I didn't. I didn't think anybody it would just be like, "Oh, nobody's yeah. really gonna care," and then yeah. it got retreated. I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, at the Nintendo Direct, uh, which we'll be talking about shortly, they announced Kirby Clash, uh, which is kind of a, uh, I guess it's a boss rush style game where you're where you're only fighting like boss type characters as Kirby and three other uh people they can be players or they'll give you um AI controlled friends to fill the slots and you can either be a sword person a hammer person a mage or a physician which you know his healer and it's kind of got like this sort of monster hunter feel to it just because you're like getting new equipment and you're only fighting these kind of big uh 
creatures and stuff. Um, I haven't gotten too far, but it's kind of interesting. It is free to start. It does have microtransaction things, and there's timers of, like, you can get currency if you visit every 12 hours and pick from the tree, and you'll get more of those uh, currency if you spend money on the game. Um, I don't know. It's a nice little uh, distraction-style game. Uh, Miranda, what have you been playing? Um... Fire Emblem Three Houses owns me Ooh. right now. Uh, I belong to it. Uh, I finished my first playthrough with the Blue Lions at about 71 hours. Jeez. I am at hour 83 in my new, not like, like from 71. Now I'm at hour 83 in my playthrough of the Black Eagles, which I think I'm going to take the church route. Um, and it's the ultimate quest for the coolest boyfriend. Or girlfriend. <laughs> it's been Man, really fun. I wish I had the time to sink into that game like that. Can you I, can I you marry? Sure. Can you yes, marry you multiple can. people and then have no. pay a witch to make them forget? No, you. There's no no, no witches, mages, uh, but no mm, witches. Mm. Um, there are also dragons. Um, but it's been super fun. Um, what happens? Okay, Fire Emblem is one of those games where characters can die permanently, right? I do not have that mode turned on. <laughs> yes, it is, it is that, though. You can have a casual mode or a normal mode. Normal yeah, but classic death. mode does have your characters die if they die in battle. Okay, so what happens if the character you marry dies? That's it. They die. They're gone. Well, you don't marry the character until the game is over. Ah, so you're, you're, you're a free, free agent up until... Yeah. And so, like, you beat the final boss. So before the final boss, it'll be like, who do I want to spend the rest of my life with? And then there's a list of everyone you have, like, enough support rank with. Um, and then you do the final boss battle, and then you get your epilogue wherein you marry that person. And you find out who everybody else married and whatnot. Hmm. Dope. It's nice that you get to pick, not like, hey, we, we together are at a point where we're already marry each other. You as the leader are like, yeah, you're, you're marrying me now. You're with me. Well, it's funny because like, uh, they come to you and they propose generally. I mean, I played a girl, so. But oh. um, at the end, they're like, they're like, I know we didn't have a romance before, but I love you. Let's get married. Like, <laughs> <laughs> immediate jump to that relationship. <laughs> well, it's just sometimes how it is. I assume. <laughs> Back in the day, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've been playing. That. I've been playing We Happy Few because I just got Game Pass, mm -hmm. um, and it's super fun. I'm having a lot of fun with its version of like alternate World War II history. So I've been playing it on stream, and it's been a blast. Nice. Cool. Mm -hmm. I wanted to like that game. You didn't? I'm not very far in it. I'm like three hours, so if it gets shitty after you go back into the city, then... It doesn't It doesn't get shitty so much as it just gets repetitive. Mm. Like, the, once you're back in the city, there's not much to do, and I'm not sure if they've added on to that, because it's been like three or four months since I played it, mm -hmm. uh, but it was still like in the early access, and there was a lot of stuff that they were working on, but I know that... Or no, it was right after it dropped when I played it. And right, because it's not still in early access, is it? I'm pretty sure it's no, out. It's, it's out. Yeah, it officially so, released. Yeah, I don't know. It just got dry. It was fun for a little bit, but it was uh, right now. Uh, it's like super story focused. So if it like stays that way, then we'll be fine. Because I have um, I'm playing on easy because I don't like to be stressed out on stream. Um, so. I had like all the survival mechanics or I don't actually have to pay attention to them at all if I don't feel like it. Um, so that's like eases that bit of repetitiveness. Mm. Cool. For sure. Uh, well, that's all we've been playing, but some of us went to PAX West and they saw cool Destiny weapons, which is in the news. Tay Chineris, <laughs> tell me about those exciting weapons. So, like, at the booth, I saw somebody doing this. Apparently, if you have enough time, uh, you could have gone into the collection screen and, like, got a sneak peek at a bunch of the weapons. Um, so the machine gun that we were able to use doesn't have a name. 
Um, it's literally like dollar sign machine gun zero period name dollar sign. Um, so they didn't they didn't name it yet, but uh, it's the one that they had the model for as well, where it's like powered by the bug on the inside, and he like lifted the model out and I and showed us. Um, but it's really weird because it's technically a machine gun, but like. When you get heavy ammo in a crucible match, you get three shots, and it's like a sniper. Like you can hit from a ways hmm. away, but like it, the iron sights are like, or the the sights are like a machine gun sights. And the, I hit somebody in like the leg and killed them with one shot. And I was oh like, geez, yeah. um, it's like a. I, I think the perk is like uh, fires powerful explosive ammunition, um, and it can only hold up to like thirteen rounds, so the, it it hits really hard. Um, but it's really fun, but, uh, that one was playable. The rest of these people found in collections, there is the Deathbringer rocket launcher. That thing looks freaking sick, nasty. It is really cool. Uh, <laughs> Deathbringer's two perks are dark deliverance and dark descent. The rocket fires a projectile that drops powerful void orbs when it explodes and players can also remote detonate the rocket mid flight. The farther the void orbs fall, the more damage they deal. That's really cool. And I could totally, so the farther the orbs fall, the more damage they deal. So I could totally, I wonder if like, if it's worth it enough to like on certain bosses just shoot up to hit something in the sky mm -hmm. and just like have it fall down that would be really cool if that's like a new meta in the next raid or something um the divinity uh trace rifle is really neat divinity has two exotic perks judgment causes the weapon to create an aura around an enemy that disrupts and weakens them with sustained damage penance causes enemies enveloped in judgment to take damage so it seems really, really cool. And the, the model for that one looks awesome. And then they also found uh, Kvostov, the first gun that you get in Destiny 1, uh, the auto rifle. Um, that's like in the in the collections, but not the exotic version that they made later. Just the regular white, like, common gun. The rest, uh, there's not really not really pictures of, but they did they did one dude did look at the the Garden of Salvation like raid armor. Um, which looks really cool, but it definitely doesn't look um, like they've shown in pictures or in Vidox. It looks like a little different, so, you know, still an early build. But yeah, cool stuff. I'm excited. October 1st is coming up soon. Yeah. Um, another game that's coming up is called Cyberpunk 2077, which will no longer feature a third-person camera. The uh, game will be entirely in first person. This includes cutscenes. Well, okay. So it says specifically third person to appear only very occasionally during cutscenes. Um, yeah. This means l much of the like scenes that we've seen uh, in, in trailers and such, you'll be looking at through your player's eyes rather than seeing your player, which. I don't know. It's a it's a weird point of view. I'm I'm very skittish about it being so first person, especially due to the fact that I got real motion sick from a first person game recently. And I like for like a shooter, I'm all right with it, but like exploring a world, I'm not sh like I would like to see my character in the world, but the weirdest thing about it, I think, is that the game offers character customization. So you're going to be able to design your character, but the only times you'll really be seeing them is in a mirror. Or uh, in your inventory screen and whatnot, too. I don't oh, yeah. know. I think yeah. this yeah, is... I'm sure when you open your character. Yeah, I guess yeah. In, in the inventory screen or in a mirror, and that's that's the only time you'll see them. And it's like, why why have me customize them if they're it's I'm not going to see them in the world? Games. I'm very intrigued because you have, like, as they describe it in the article, intimate moments um and i want to see if they do that from first person <laughs> just to know what that looks like in a in a video game in the year of our lord mm. 2020 uh, <laughs> <laughs> it feels like that'll be interesting yeah i i don't know i'm really excited about it being first person just because the immersion stuff is really dope like i think if they do it well uh because you have you have that cutscene from last year's where you like go in, you talk to a guy, and you get, like, throat slammed against a wall, and you pop your weapons out to go at him. And if it, it's all a matter of they, if they do a good job of making it look cool, which I'm, like, nervous about, but they've done pretty much amazing so far in everything they've done, so it's a matter of yeah. how it's going to be. 
I'm excited. I trust CD Projekt Red. Yeah. They'll they. I assume you'll have abilities to like upgrade your eyes or stuff like that. I wonder yeah. if that. I wonder if that will be affected in like cutscenes. Like, will, will you mm. be able to see stuff differently because of that? It's an interesting idea. I don't know how that would really yeah, play out, though. Um, I don't know. I guess. I guess we'll see. I. Uh, I'm kind of hesitant. I'm gonna wait on reviews for Cyberpunk 2077, or maybe Miranda will really. Pop it. Miranda will yeah. just play it and tell me if it's good. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> what'll happen because I'm gonna get it right away. Yeah. Provided I'm, I'm not like flat fucking broke when it comes out or something. Yeah, if I that is one of those games. At this point, I almost don't buy any games. Um, but like if I. If I had the money, like that is one of those that I would be like, no, no, no doubt. Like I, I would go ahead mm-hmm. and pre-order it. <laughs> there are very few of those at this point, but that would be one. Um, and then the Nintendo Direct happened, and yeah, we're did. gonna we're gonna go just over randomly. It. Yep, just nobody <laughs> on like a Wednesday or a Thursday morning. They're like, oh, here's all this news. I love how Nintendo does that. Um, and this one was, I think. People have been big. like, oh, do, do we need this Nintendo Direct and stuff? This one was a big one. This one, yeah, this everybody, one was a every, lot of stuff. Yeah, everybody came uh, th- from this and was like, yeah, that they was a good came. one. Um, So it started off with Overwatch is coming to the Switch. Yeah, it literally just like, here's the, the like cinematic kind of trailer. It just started had, like that. They had that leak uh, like a few days ago about the Overwatch yeah. like Switch case. Which like yeah. had a lot of people thinking it was going to come to Switch. I feel like it's going to be bad though. I don't think so. Blizzard does not. There. So Blizzard in the past, like at least recently, they don't have as much as good of a reputation as they have in the past. But that's only because of like monetization and design kind of stuff when it comes to like WoW. Mm-hmm. But like they're. They're like, like game design, but like the technical side of things, like Blizzard rarely ever releases something that is not polished, right? Like the Diablo three port on on Switch is great, and I know that this would be hard to do, but I I have no doubt that they wouldn't do it unless they had nailed it. I guess that's true. I mean, like it is Blizzard, but I think of like yeah. what The Witcher looks like on Switch, and I'm just yeah. like trying to imagine these like fast like online because switch is not great about doing online stuff um yeah so to there's have no something actual like packed. gameplay yet yeah the moment so... where they release like oh here's a here's a full match that's when i'm gonna go like, oh. yeah that's i don't what think I i'm see. gonna buy this like i play overwatch and i like overwatch and i like watch the overwatch league a lot of the times um but like i don't think i'm gonna buy this because like i don't know i don't, I don't see myself um it's not one of those games that are where i'm like oh perfect on the switch if it was cross progression Right, like if it was cross save where I had all of the stuff on the account, then I would definitely consider it more. Um, but like, I don't want to start a new account. I don't like, really want to play. I don't have any my skins. Like Overwatch portable, like, and that's yeah, like the I only. Mean, I don't. Like, I already no, own it. Like, <laughs> like if I'm wanting to just kind of like play a chill first person shooter in bed with the Switch, which I can do and it's cool. I'd hop into Splatoon 2 because the matches are like three minutes, <laughs> you know, yeah. and it, it's a lot more like friendly for the Joy-Cons and um, but it is really cool. A lot yeah. of people will be able to play it who haven't before. Yeah, I think, I think that's the, the big deal is that, I mean, a lot of people have played it on other devices, but especially younger gamers who only have a switch is going to open it up to them. And yeah, yeah, and I think that's kind of cool. I mean, we'll see how it runs. But uh, we also got to see a little bit more of Luigi's Mansion Three. They showed off some mul- uh, they showed off some uh, floors that they all seem to be themed, which is kind of cool. And they also showed off uh, some mini game modes, uh, which there's one that allows eight players uh, to play a four v four ghost catching uh, game, which seemed cool. I've never played a Luigi's Mansion game, but maybe I'll pick me this ne- one up. Me neither, but me it either. seems really cool, and yeah. a lot of people are very excited about it. So oh I'm my like, god. Maybe. You guys are the worst. I'm really excited <laughs> for this game. <laughs> wasn't it like GameCube was like the last yeah, one? But like, I didn't have Luigi's a GameCube. Luigi's Mansion 2 was on the 3DS. Mm, see, I didn't play that, but that, that would have yeah, been That's the one I played. I never had a GameCube, so I missed the yeah. first one. I suck too, but I played the second one, <laughs> and it was great. 
Mm, okay. um we got a uh, super kirby clash which they announced was already out and free which i already talked about because i've been checking that out uh they announced a trials of mana remake because all the great jrpgs are getting remakes now um it is a modern remake of the snes game uh it looks it looks pretty i will say like i didn't i didn't know what the game was when it was being shown off but i was like it's pretty um (laughs) does anybody play trials of mana Mm -mm. no but it it does look very pretty it's it's very interesting looking i was like i'm I'm intrigued by it um we also saw that return of oberdin is coming to the switch which is a cool like so the oberdin is a ship that uh like sunk in the sea it's it's got kind of a titanic type situation to it where there's a lot of people on it and they don't know what exactly happened uh but your character has a device to allow him to travel back like back uh to see how somebody died and it'll be like frozen in time so you'll be able to look around the scene but it won't be like playing so you can't go like oh well this guy was shot um but you'll be able to like look at oh this guy's got a gun this it kind of looks like this person was shot it's probably that but you're kind of looking around and then you can you can make deductions to try i believe you play as a uh insurance um adjuster type person so you're kind of trying to like write down okay this person died of this and and uh, all that stuff um so I, I've heard cool stuff about it. It seems like it's gonna it's work just fine on the Switch, um, and it may be a cool, cozy game to play on stream, Miranda. Maybe it also sounds like a perfect uh, airplane game. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, I I hadn't heard about the game until like the Game Awards last fall, and it won like Best Art Direction, I think. Oh yeah, I I appreciate like. The the art almost looks like it was taken through an old uh, Game Boy camera. I don't know if you guys yeah. know about this. Yep. Um, so that's cool. Uh, we also got a trailer for a game coming from Game Freak, the makers of Pokemon. Uh, this is called Little Town Hero, uh, which it seems like a JRPG with some like twists that you're, I guess using ideas to uh battle the creatures um it wasn't a hundred percent clear how that worked out there's also things about like you're going to be moving around so maybe you want to move near town's guard so they can help you in the battle but uh it's a new rpg behind with the developers behind pokemon yeah um and it's like I'm I'm pretty sure this is the one, but I'll have to check to be sure. I think this is the one where Toby Fox is doing all of the music. Oh, yeah, I believe okay. I believe that was that. Which is like I'm super interested in this. It looks very cute. He's the uh guy who did the music for Undertale. Yeah. Releasing October sixteenth. So like very soon and it looks really cute and it's twenty five bucks and Toby Fox. Like I'm actually really in- into this. <laughs> Isn't Toby Fox the guy who did everything for Undertale? Yeah. Okay. The, the whole game and all of the music. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's crazy. And then we got the Banjo Kazooie release date, which was September fourth. It's out now for uh for Smash, not just it's you know, <laughs> on on Banjo-Kazooie. Smash. The the Banjo Kazooie character is out now. Uh, we also got the announcement of the uh, next character in the uh, character pack, and that is Terry Bogard from. Um, Fatal Fury. Fatal Fury, yeah. Which, I, I love their way of, of uh, announcing that. Like, A, they kind of went back in history, and people were like, oh, it's from the SNES. And then they were, like, moved over to to the... What, what, what console was that? The Neo Geo? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the Neo Geo. And uh, then showed a bunch of characters trying to grab the, like, letter... And then finally, it lands at Terry Bogard's uh, feet, and and I've seen I've seen video of the people at the Nintendo store in New York watching, and everybody just losing their shit when when uh, Terry grabbed it. Yeah. Um, also, there's some new Me Fighter costumes coming, 
which oh, one geez. of them is Sans from Undertale. Yeah, that was a that was a big thing. It was the last one that they showed, and I'm like, weird, do him as a me fighter costume, but okay. Well, I love the fact that everybody's like, Sans is in Smash, and it's like, it's yeah. a costume. That's- yeah, that's what I th- I heard everybody being like, Sans is in Smash, and I was like, oh shit, that's really cool. And then I looked up the actual trailer, and I was like, oh, it's not really a full He's character. He's basically no. in better Smash. Than nothing. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm one of like three people on the internet who never played Undertale, so this meant nothing to me, but me my too. Like, Twitter mm, timeline Undertale's was really so excited good. about it. You really haven't, Bryce? That's, <laughs> I, that's I maybe did the first battle in it. I need I need to play it. I think it was discounted on Switch, and I think that might be the place I'm gonna play it. Yeah. Game's so good. <laughs> it's it's really, really good. But uh, yeah, I just I just love the fact that everyone is like freaking out about it. It's like it's a costume that I when people give me shit because I play as me fighter uh, as my main. I think I'll just start telling people I'm a Sans main, and they'll be like, "Yeah." <laughs> if, you, if you do the gunner one, then yeah, he's like he's the gunner. Oh he's yeah, I'm gunner. I'm a I'm a sword fighter, so yeah. I guess I'd have to switch. Um, we saw more of uh, Zelda Link's Awakening. I'm not sure we got any new information from that. It seemed like it was stuff we kind of already saw. Just footage. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Dragon. Which I'm excited. I have pre-ordered one of the very few games I have that I'm going to get. Like it's it's downloaded on my Switch. I'm excited about oh, it. Oh, nice. Uh, Dragon Quest 11 S: Echoes of an Elusive Age, Definitive Edition. <laughs> Would you say that that is the Teddy Chineris game? Because it's not. But, like, I actually, like, you wouldn't look at it and think that it is. But I, one of the things I forgot to mention that I played was the demo for that. On the flight to PAX, I played, I download, I had downloaded the demo and I played it for, like, two hours or something. And it's really kind of cool. <laughs> like, it's got a cool world and it's really fun. And, like, it's very much one of those, like, if you get... If you sink yourself into it and kind of like immerse into it, it's going to be a really good experience. You know what I mean? Um, and it's out right now. I, I was looking at that a minute ago and I was like, shit, this is out. And I was trying to look up reviews just to see what people thought of it. Um, there's, n- for some weird reason, nothing on Metacritic. Um, like nothing for it. But on IGN, uh, Jared Petty gave it an 8.8. Um, great, a massive, most masterful traditional RPG that focuses more on c- combat mechanics, loot, and exploration than story. So, if you want something to get really immersed into and spend like a hundred hours in, um, first play Fire Emblem and then you have Dragon Quest. <laughs> well, speaking of Fire Emblem, Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE Encore is uh, coming oh to the my Switch. God. Can somebody explain? Apparently, it is a hybrid. It is of Shin Megen, M- M- Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem, which is it, which was the original um, Persona, and a pop star slash pop star game. And I don't know. It looks cool. It looks weird. Anybody excited? It was on the Wii U. It's a Wii U port. Which, which like seems like everything from the Wii U is coming to Switch. <laughs> yeah, that was genuinely one of the last ones. And I was like, "Oh wow, they're they're pretty much done at this point," <laughs> which is good because now I'll never have to buy. Well, no, you never have to touch your Wii U. They, I don't have a Wii U. I was gonna buy one. I should throw mine away. I, my girlfriend wants the Animal Crossing amiibo party game, so I was like, maybe I'll still have to buy it for that. They should bring that to Switch just so I can just be like, no, I'll never, I'll never get you Wii U. <laughs> uh, Deadly Premonition, Premonition 2 A Blessing in Disguise and Deadly Premis- Premonition Origins are coming Never played Don't know yeah, much don't about them Never played uh, Teddy Chineris Divinity Original Sin 2 is coming Fuck yeah it's already out Oh yeah it, they, they said Divinity, Orig- Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition releasing right now They're like oh yeah and it's out Um which is really cool, because this is one of those games, right? If I remember correctly, I believe it came out in 2017. I'm not 100% on that, but I believe it did. It might have been 2018. But this is, like, one of those games that came out in 
a, a time period where there were like four different games where I'm like, I love all of these, and I could tell, like Horizon, Persona 5, Zelda, like, and like Divinity, maybe they're different time periods, but I put it in the same category, where like, if I played this whole game, I would adore it, and it would be like one of my favorite games of all time, right? Like, I know that this is one of those after playing like the first like eight hours, which is what I did with like most of those. Um, it's so good. Like, it's genuinely really, really good. It's really well designed, and the narrative is awesome. And like, so when you go up to people and talk, it's like there's a narrator of all at all times like there's a text but like the narrator uh like narrates through the thing and he has a very traditional like audiobook like medieval kind of sound and like the music is super ambient and like going at all times and makes it, it's like it is it is like a dungeons and dragons thing but in a video game it's as close as you're gonna get to DD in a video game um and this version you can cross save with your steam save you can sign into your account and like continue on your Steam version, and then like go and and do cross save with that, which is awesome. And it's out right now, and it's only fifty bucks instead of sixty, I believe. I saw that. Uh, really tempted, but I don't have the money, so I'm gonna be responsible. <laughs> um. Well, maybe buying something older will be uh, cheaper, like Doom sixty four, the game everybody has been cl- clamoring to play. That's um. Me. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure there's an audience for it, uh, but they are releasing the Nintendo 64 uh, Doom to the Switch. Uh, and it's not been re-released since the Nintendo 64, so that's that's pretty neat. Yeah, I'm not sure what the difference between Doom 64 and like OG Doom are. They look similar, but I'm pretty sure they're like it's just a whole another game. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I would think. Uh, Rogue Company is coming. I don't, uh... This is interesting. It's a totally new IP from Hi-Rez, which is why I was like, oh. Like, it said Hi-Rez Studios, and I was like, what? Like, because they're still doing Paladins and Smite. Like, I wasn't sure <laughs> like, how Hi-Rez successful pretty busy. Paladins was. <laughs> Paladins is still going and is still it? pretty successful. That's a real thing. Okay. Huh. Yeah. It's not like insanely successful. It's it's definitely you know, it's not like Overwatch, yeah. but it's it's not it's but it's also not like Battleborn. <laughs> I was gonna, maybe Battleborn was the one I was thinking of. Um, they do competitions and whatnot. It's a whole thing. But oh, um, okay. it came out on Switch as well. But yeah, High Res. I think High Res is honestly getting a lot bigger. So like. I guess it makes sense, but I was like, man, they already have, like, a few games that they're actively working on. Uh, But yeah, totally new IP, so I'm interested in that, but it's coming out next year. A sci-fi shooter, which is very different from the fantasy kind of stuff that they do. Um, And then the one that I'm most excited about, anytime we get Pokemon Sword and Shield news, I'm excited. Uh, We got to see uh, Pokemon Camp, which is a little place where you can uh, hang out with your Pokemon and they're just kind of like wandering around and being best friends and stuff uh, at Pokemon Camp, which Pokemon Camp is just like a tent that you can set down and then your Pokemon can just wander around and you can play with them. Um, at your camp, you can also cook food for your Pokemon, which it didn't. There's apparently a hundred different recipes, which I assume all have different uh like effects and stuff they didn't dive too far into that you're gonna be collecting ingredients and stuff all the poke all the uh more recent pokemon games seem to have like a little extra mechanic in that they'll uh put in like i'm playing through sword and or not through uh through sun and moon right now specifically moon and they have a little like island that you can go to where your pokemon in your boxes are like chilling out yeah that's uh, what that made me think of yeah, so it kind of seems seems something like that. Uh, but it looks really cute. Every time, like, the graphics and the style of this world looks so cool that I'm I'm just really excited. Uh, we also saw two new Pokemon. Uh, Polter... Poltergeist? Poltergeist. 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 I knew it, was, I knew it had to do with tea. The, like, the teacup? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can drink its tea. Very yep. weird. Oh my god, I love I love and hate Nintendo Direct sometimes. Like as I'm watching the thing, he's like, "And who's this new Pokemon?" <laughs> like the dude's voice. It's so funny. It's so dorky. I love it. 
Um, and then we also saw Cramorant, which will, uh, if you do a surf or uh, dive uh, move, it'll come back with a fish in its mouth. And if it takes damage, it will shoot that fish at enemies. <laughs> uh, which Gulp missile. Yeah, the the, the the specific attack is called Gulp Missile. Uh, wow. it's, well, it's, it's 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 his ability. Um, I I hope that thing evolves because he looks so weird, and I want him to like evolve into something crazier than he already is. He just looks like a dumb bird. Yeah, I know, <laughs> and that's what I love about him. Um, <laughs> this one we was another one that we had an idea about uh, because the controllers got leaked. But the SNES games are coming to the Switch as part of the Nintendo Switch Online service. Uh, it is launching with 20 games from the get-go. And uh, I think people have been really excited about, you know, wanting SNES games to come. Uh, and it's dope. We also did get, uh, like, they did announce, oh, you will be able to buy SNES controllers that you can hook to your Switch as well, which we... Uh, what what caused us to find out this exists? Um, you guys, you guys excited to play uh, Kirby's Dream Course on your Switch? Uh, Kirby's Dream Course. Um, what? Here's the real question: What like Super NES games are on here? And uh, then I'll, I'll, I very possibly. I'll go through the list real quick. It's Brawl Brothers, Demon Crest, Demon's Crest, Joe and Mac Two, Lost in the Tropics, Kirby's Dream Land Three. Star Fox, Super EDF, Earth Defense Force, Super Mario Kart, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, Super Poyo Poyo 2, Super Tetris, Breath of Fire, F-Zero, Kirby's Dream Course, Pilot Wings, Stunt Force FX, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Super Mario World, Super Metroid, Super Soccer, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Three of those I'm excited about. I don't know if I will actually play them, but I mean, come on, you you guys know me. I won't. Yeah. But like <laughs> Super Mario World, um, what was it? Links, Link to the Past. Link to the Past. Yeah. And um, oh man, I already forgot the other. But there were Super there Mario were three. Kart. No. <laughs> Kirby Streamland. I've actually played the. I played that on the SNES Classic. It's real bad. <laughs> It's real bad. Like the control, like you try and drift, and it's it's the controls are are real bad. Um, but yeah, yeah. There's there's some in there that I would like to play that I've heard. Oh, Super Metroid. That's oh. the one um, that I've heard about for a long time that I would love to play. I've played Super Mario World, but I haven't played the other two. Um, so yeah, it's cool to have that on your Switch. Yeah, it's it's cool that the these games are finally coming to the Switch. Uh, that like if. Uh, the the was it the retro console devices were the only real way to kind of play them. At, if you last you were gonna buy, you know, old consoles that you know they're not supporting those stores anymore. So it's cool to finally have a easier way to play these games. And it, yeah. you know, we're gonna get more of these games eventually. I will be curious to see if they keep going and maybe we get like an N sixty four or GameCube, uh, systems in the package. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tetris 99's gaining update. Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. We saw that. It looks Which fun. Which actually looks fun. Uh, Damon X Machina. Uh, there's a demo out. Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast is coming to the Switch, which is like, okay. Nobody saw that coming, but cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we saw Witcher 3 Wild Hunt uh, shown off again. Assassin's Creed October Re- 15th still. Yeah. Assassin's Creed Re- Rebel-, Rebel Collection. Yeah, which is Rogue and 4 Black Flag. Yeah. I'm all about it. Including all the DLCs. Uh, Dauntless oh, is coming. Awesome. And uh, uh, we got to see a little bit more Animal Crossing. Xeno, uh, and we Bla- got a release date. Yeah, yeah, March 20th. Yeah. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, and that's, that's actually really big because people really love that game. And that is the Nintendo Direct. Teach and Eris, uh, hold t- on. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. 
okay, Animal Crossing doesn't release till a few weeks after Final Fantasy VII Remake. I was okay. about to freak the fuck out. Like, there you go. oh my god, why would you do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> that was like Borderlands 3 and Destiny 2 Shadowkeep being like two days apart. <laughs> oh. That's good. Not terrible. Tay Chineris, yeah. uh spill some new- news on us while I use okay, the bathroom. We'll go through this pretty quick, but real talk, Cube World was a game and and is now going to actually be a game and that game was so good okay so it came out literally there was an, an alpha for it six years ago six years ago at this point and i Jeez. was like and 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 like it was a dude who was still working on his game it's like a very it's i don't know how to describe cube world it's a like it's a voxel based like 3d go around action adventure procedurally generated minecraft but more dungeon crawler kind of thing and it's super fun you can play with your friends or by yourself but there was only that alpha six years ago and then we never heard from the dude but not never like once a year he'd be like oh yeah i added a map (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and we're like what like is, and everybody be like oh he said something he said something guys but like it's not dead then, yet yeah but then like uh a couple days ago he just said cube world will be released on steam hopefully around the end of september slash october 2019 so hopefully in the next month or two that's the thing like the steam page exists it's actually like coming out uh, he talked about why he kind of went silent. He um, he said, as some of you might remember, we got DDoSed as soon as we opened the shop. It might sound silly, but this event traumatized me and kind of broke something inside me. I never told anyone about it, and I don't want to go into the details, but I'm dealing with anxiety and depression ever since. Social media didn't improve it, as you might imagine. I'm still not sure if it's a good idea to tell the world about it, but I wanted to give the fans an explanation. So there's definitely a reason that he did not talk, and it makes mm-hmm. sense. I would not either. Uh, if I was dealing with that kind of stuff, it would make sense to go silent and just kind of work on it um, and work on yourself and, and try and try and keep going that way. Um, but it's finally releasing, which is very exciting. Also, real quick, Telltale Games um, is being bought. It's uh, like the, I mean, like the IP. Bought. Yeah. Yeah. Like the IP. Um, and I guess the franchise is associated with the IP, but it's not like an already set company. It's just like two dudes, I think. Um, and- the new... They're gonna hire back all the co worker the workers as like freelancers. It's really shitty. The whole thing is really shitty. They're not gonna hire yeah. back I mean, full time workers. Not... <laughs> well, I don't think they can. They would if they could. But like it se- the new Telltale games will be helmed by James Otley and Brian Waddle, two industry veterans with experience primarily in mobile gaming and technology side. And then the quote says, We believe there's still so much life to the brand and its franchises, and we look forward to building upon the company's storytelling legacy. It's better than nobody having it. Yeah, because right? <laughs> we're, we can finally just, buy dead. the games again. Yeah, honestly, I am just happy if the games are on the store. <laughs> Like that would be awesome because right now, like the the whole company disappeared into the ether. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's people are like, oh, it sucks that you're buying tail or like Telltale Games is coming back and not uh, hiring these old workers back. And it's like, I'm not sure it's these guys' responsibility to like they're it's they're not. kind of, they're they're kind of I'm not saying they have to hire back the old workers. I am saying that they should hire on like real people instead of just doing contractors and freelancers. It's like bringing back a corpse at that point. Like It's probably a money yeah. issue at the end of the day. Of course. Of, of they're just they're just probably had enough money to buy the name and the the assets and they're just were like, "Okay, what can we make happen?" So Yeah. It's I like I I I respect what they're they're trying to do and hopefully they can you know learn from the mistakes of past Telltale games and and do some yeah, cool stuff hopefully. in the future. But um, last news story: Celeste is releasing a cha- I think it's already out a Chapter Nine DLC for free, and the chapter is called Farewell, and it has like over a hundred new levels or like it's like a lot it's like a whole a bunch of new levels a whole new like soundtrack it's like a mini sequel in a way and it's like a farewell kind of thing and and really really cool if you like celeste then and if you beat it then go play that uh well if you like this podcast or any of the last geek content you can go to patreon.com slash last geek and support the brand like Aaron C did. You are an amazing person and you just need to believe in yourself 
If you don't, <laughs> if you do, that's good, but it's it, you're great. Uh, thank you for supporting the show. Um, topic of the show. Hey, now that every one of us has gone to a dope gaming convention, what do you think they mean for gamers? Is it a chance to meet new friends, a chance to learn about new games, a chance to spread diseases among the people? Like, yes. what, what, what does video game conventions mean to you? Well, that last one was my express purpose for going to PAX West. <laughs> I planned it. It's like, ah, PAX West is next week. I need to get sick right now. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely happens at the conventions. I came with the sickness. I brought it. Both me and Darian were just at a video game convention before going to PAX, so Yeah. So maybe somebody had get, went to that one oh, hoping to spread true. it and then and then pass it along to the next convention. No, my Damn. symptoms showed up. Well, I suppose I could have gotten it from 2D, but I definitely didn't get symptoms until Tuesday. Hmm. So I suppose it's within the window, but I don't know. There yeah. were a lot grosser people at 2- 2DCon for sure. Mm. <laughs> I, Dang. I will say this this PAX West, I only smelled like one dude who was clearly need a shower. For the yeah, mo- that's what I'm saying. I only ran into like yeah, the BO too. problem like once or twice, but yeah. at 2D Con, it was like every other room I went into was just like, whew, someone needs some deodorant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Miranda, what good. does uh, gaming conventions mean to you? You've been uh, to. I think I've been to a lot. <laughs> yeah, what, what have you gone to? Um. Uh, so my first one, which is not super gaming, but I went to IG, IGN House Party was the first thing I ever went to. It was like the nice. podcast beyond co- uh, podcast unlocked, That's like awesome. a 200 and 400th episode. Um, yeah. I met friends there and the friends I met there were the reasons I've been to two or three, three PSXs now. Um, Ooh, which are the best by far. Um, I don't think it's about making friends and like networking among people like the people that I met there are the people I have a podcast with now, and they're the people I game with every single day of my life. Um, I think definitely more so than games. Like, I go and I'll play a few games every time, but not a ton. Um, so, like, more so it's definitely just, like, making friends. It also depends on who you are. Like, if I don't know, if you're not part of any sort of online community or something and you just want to go to a gaming convention, then, like, like if, if you were me... In high school, when I wanted to go to PAX, it would have been a much different thing than me going now. Like me going now, I'm very involved in like the kind of funny community and whatnot. Like, so I know people and I have friends that are there. So it was like a a good chance to spend time with them. But like if I went just in high school, it would have been like um, just a good opportunity to be around the thing that I love. Like it would literally just be because like. I I've always lived in a place where there aren't many nerds or whatever. So I would have been there being like, Oh my God, <laughs> this yeah. is so cool. Just like being in that space and being able to play new games. Is what I, I loved reminding everybody the whole time we were there that there were so many fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> just just go walk into uh, the show floor and just be like nerds. <laughs> so many nerds, nerds everywhere. Uh, Pretty much. I, I mean, yeah, we as as kind of funny best friends, we did have the advantage of going to the panels and just being like, oh, we all love this uh, same thing. But even like standing in line for like Borderlands, you kind of like are like, oh, yeah, what 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 are you going to play as like, uh, I mean, uh, Teddy, when you were waiting in line for Destiny, you were like talking to the, the people about like what their main and stuff. Yeah. So like, yeah, for sure. I, I've, even if you don't have people that you know are going to be there it's like like a chance to meet people that you can become your new friends which is cool but yeah it's also i got to see so many cool games that were like not on my radar which i love yeah that's true a lot of indies for my for my first like convention i was like they announced ign house party and i was like you know what i'm gonna go by myself to san francisco and we're gonna see how it works out so like even then it was just like if you go by yourself or if you go like you're gonna meet people to talk to because you all love the same thing like no matter yep. what you will make a connection with a few people oh yeah. yeah i went to e3 about 10 years ago when it was still press only and it was just me out there and um i ended up going to some of like the after parties and uh there was there was a party with an open bar 
uh, all night. And um, I, I, I went there not knowing anybody, but just kind of talking. Well, hey, I got drunk at a certain point, and that's when Bryce gets real friendly. Uh, but <laughs> It was just like, "Hello, I'm I'm Bryce. Nice to meet you." And they're like, "Uh, hi." And uh, and like, the, <laughs> Crystal I, met, space. <laughs> I I I guess I did, lost connection with them. Like that, tw- Twitter wasn't as big a thing as it is now because now, like, you meet somewhere like, "Oh, follow me on Twitter." Uh, mm-hmm. But but those people ended up like giving me a ride back to my uh, hotel because the like uh, public transportation had, had ended for the night. So, like there's dope people out there maybe don't you know jump in with a random person like i did but you know <laughs> gamers are dope um rise up we're gonna we're gonna quickly go through questions and comments do you want to be part of the show go to race at gamecast.com slash submit to submit a question comment or your favorite disease to for for us to read on the show fire turtle sent in two questions what is your go-to snack when you go to the movie theater miranda Kazoozles, now known as sweet tart ropes. Hmm. Okay. Tell you generous. That's a good that's a good answer, because I wouldn't have expected that. Um I usually just get popcorn and water if I get anything, because I gotta get popcorn when I go to the movies. But if there if I do end up getting a snack, then I'll get bunch of crunch, which is like one of my favorite snacks. Yeah, I I've I've gotta have like popcorn. It's just great to have that to snack on i was the same way but like when i started going to the movies more it, it was more like i can't be buying popcorn every time i'm here <laughs> uh so. darian what's your favorite go-to snack at the movie theater i like to uh totally buy every time i go there and don't ever sneak in my own candy uh <laughs> i like the cookie dough bites and i like sour patch kids <laughs> I had to sour think. Sour patch kids. Well, That's I called them sour punch kids the other day, <laughs> and that was very dumb. That's not what they're called. <laughs> so I had to I like see it. make sure I say the right word. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Mine's popcorn. Uh. Fire turtle said, uh, "Stole this from Alex Van Aken on Twitter. What is the grossest? Uh, what is your grossest food habit?" Uh, she says, "Mine is probably mixing ketchup with mac and cheese." Or peanut butter pickle sandwiches. It sounds gross, but tastes super good. Yeah, it definitely nope. sounds gross. Sorry, Alex. Or Aaron. Not sure which <laughs> that is. Oh no, that that is that's Aaron. I think. Okay. I, I Alex provided one, but I can't remember what it is offhand. Uh, Teddy, what what's yours? I don't think i necessarily have one but and here's one that i haven't tried so i don't really know if it's gross but it seems it it, it sounds gross from my friend eric <laughs> if you ever listen to this he would he always he would put applesauce on like everything right but David like it does that too but like spaghetti he was like i'm telling you spaghetti and applesauce i'm like dude no he dips <laughs> his pizza rolls in applesauce uh, and yeah. yeah and he was like what oh, yeah, the hell time, like those square or rectangle pizzas at school with lunch he'd dip it in applesauce <laughs> like <"Ugh."> yeah <laughs> i don't know about that uh i don't think i really have one off the top of my head at least darren you got some gross food so ketchup and mac and cheese is actually delicious don't feel bad for that one uh that but like i also pretty normal. Dip- yeah, it's it's common. Uh, I like putting ketchup on a lot of shit that I shouldn't, though. Uh, like, I like to dip potato chips in ketchup sometimes. Um, I put ketchup on my breakfast mashes. Um, like, I'll make, like, breakfast potatoes and eggs and ham and bacon and cheese and then just fucking just douse it in ketchup. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, probably the, that's probably mine. Okay. Just way too much ketchup. Uh, Miranda. Ranch, uh, in true Midwestern fashion. I just put so much fucking ranch on everything. Everything. And way too much every time. Ranch is so good on pizza. Ranch is good on pizza. Every time I eat at Popeye's, uh, they don't give me enough of the ranch dipping sauces. Last time I went there, I was like, I never get enough ranch. And they literally gave me like 15 cups. And I was like, yeah, this is great. Thank you. (laughs) This is better. Uh, Probably the weirdest thing I do is I mix blue Powerade and mellow yellow. And it tastes very, very good. That's like what the original Baja Blast was. 
was yeah, Mountain Dew and Blue yeah, Powerade. It is very similar. So, yeah. Hmm. Also, I can't find Baja Blast in cans, so it's I gotta make it's my own. It's a seasonal yeah. thing. Well, it, it, it was like I looked for it this summer, and maybe Walmart was just like, no, not for you. So they do it randomly. Yeah. It and they don't announce it anymore. Um, okay. Well, that is the questions that were submitted. Uh, we're gonna wrap this up with some housekeeping. Go to lastgeek.com for links to the podcast on all your favorite podcast services, including iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher, as well as the video version on youtube.com slash lastgeek. Uh uh if you like the show, please subscribe, rate, and review it on iTunes and Stitcher. It helps us grow. And become more powerful. <laughs> what, Miranda? What was that? Was like a? We're, it we're was almost like stretching. a dab. Oh. It is. <laughs> the, <laughs> it does kind of look the, like a dab. It's not like the Heisman. No, it's close. Uh, other Last Geek stuff you should check out: new Game Make Corp. Uh, Last Geek has a merch store, and uh, we are currently releasing uh, Let's Plays every month. The first. One for non-patrons has gone out. Uh, patrons get it a month early. So everybody can now watch the Move or Die Let's Play. And patrons, if you uh, give us at least $1, you'll be able to watch the Overcooked 2 Let's Play. Um, and we'll have more coming out uh, in the future. Uh, the next patron one will be Monster Prom. So that's some dope content to look forward to. Uh, Miranda. As kids say. Where can people hear from you? What, what do you got going on? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch at JaegerX7. That's J-A-E-G-E-R-X-7. If you want to listen to my podcast, which comes out every, I don't know, one or two weeks, um, it's you can find us on Twitter at SquadUpPod. Darian, where can people find you? Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, D-E-X-T-E-R-I-D-E-E. That's me. Tay Chineris, what's you? What is me? Yeah. Uh, a, a, just a real, real broken human. <laughs> uh, Twitch.tv slash Teddy Chineris and Twitter.com slash Teddy Chineris. Last name spelled C H I N A R I S. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to stream more now that I'm actually back. I haven't streamed in like two weeks and it's really sad. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Last Geek, Instagram Last Geek Plays, uh, YouTube.com slash Last Geek, and LastGeek.com for links to all of the podcasts and all the excitement. Um, this has been Ready Set Gamecast. Thank you for listening, and we will be back in two weeks. Bye. <laughs>